In this lecture, we'll look at thermodynamic potentials and Maxwell's relations. Till now, we have seen that the first law for a homogeneous system of a pure substance undergoing a reversible process, in particular a differential process, can be expressed as du equals to dq minus pdv. Here we have included only one type of work that is minus PDV work. Now this is from the statement of the first law. Now we can replace DQ for this reversible process by TDS and that comes from the second law. Therefore we can write DU is equal to TDS minus PDV. We see that we have two thermodynamic variables over here that is entropy and volume to describe the homogeneous system of a pure substance because U is dependent upon the change in S and V. In other words, we say that the homogeneous system over here possesses two degrees of freedom. One that is the mechanical degree of freedom and other that is the thermal degree of freedom. Note that the variables S and V are independent and extensive whereas the variables that are multiplied with these differentials of dS and dV are intensive properties. In fact what we say is that these properties are conjugate to the extensive properties S and V. To understand why, consider this. So we can write, let's say U is a function of S and V. From here we see that U will vary as we change S and V. So U is a function of S and V. So if you now consider a differential change in U, we can write as this. And to write this, we have just used the fact that u is some general function of s and v. But now from thermodynamics, that is the first and the second law, we know that this is equal to TDS minus PDV. So if we compare the terms or more formally, we say that because S and V are independent, we can vary them independently. So that can happen only if we have T is equal to this quantity. So T, that is the absolute thermodynamic temperature, is given by this and pressure is given by that is why we say that these intensive quantities temperature and pressure are conjugate to the properties S and V because they can be obtained by differentiating U with respect to S and V while keeping the other quantity constant. So recall that whenever we take a partial derivative in thermodynamics, we always explicitly specify which of the quantity is kept constant while taking the derivative. And in this case over here, V is kept constant because U we have taken to be a function of S and V. Therefore, we have put this subscript V. Now, selection of these independent variables such as S and V is largely a matter of choice. So what we have at our disposal is two pairs of mechanical and thermal variables. So the mechanical variables that we have at our disposal are pressure and volume and the thermal variables are temperature and entropy. So there are four possibilities of making a choice 
in the pair by taking one mechanical and one thermal variable. So what we can have is we can choose P and T as our variables, pressure or entropy, volume and temperature and volume and entropy. So we can change the description of the state of the system to either of these four pairs by reformulating this equation through a change of variables. In other words, if we combine the first and the second law, this is the equation that we get for a system undergoing a differential reversible process. And the properties that describe the state of the system are S and V. But we can alternatively write the same equation by changing the variables to pressure and temperature, pressure and entropy, volume and temperature and volume and entropy. So this change of variables is known as Legendre transform. So we have seen that du is equal to Pds minus Pdv. Now we want to transform these variables from S and V to some other variables. So in general, let's consider that the state of a system is described by a function of two variables. So let's say those two variables are x and y and the state is described by f of x comma y. So a differential change in f is equal to let's say u dx plus v dy where we know that u over here is the partial derivative or the slope in the x direction and v is the slope in the y direction. Now if we wish to change the description in terms of variables, let's say we want to retain this variable y, but instead of x, we want to use u to describe the state of the system, then we'll have to introduce a new function g of u comma y. So how to go from f of x comma y to g of u comma y is through Legendre transform, which is defined as, so we can define this function g as f minus u times x. So essentially what we are doing over here is that if we want to change the variables, we take this function f, which could be like our internal energy, then we subtract from it the product of the variable x that we want to change times the slope of f with respect to the variable that we want to change. In this particular case, that is x. So what we get is f minus this u times x. So this can be verified. So if we consider a differential change now in g, we get df minus u dx minus x du. And we can now substitute the expression for df and we have u dx plus v dy and these terms. So clearly u dx and u dx cancel out and we are left with dg is equal to v dy minus x du. So clearly g now is a function of y and u. So we have transformed the description of the state of the system from x to u through this transformation, which is called the Legendre transformation. So the idea of Legendre transform is that it changes the description of this function in terms of the slope rather than the variable x. Now 
Equipped with the Legendre transform, we can now introduce new functions to describe the state of the thermodynamic system in terms of other variables, starting with this equation. So from here, we see that u is a function of s and v. So u is convenient to use in situations involving changes in volume and entropy. Now, if we wish to work rather than in terms of entropy and volume, but let's say in terms of pressure and entropy, then what we need to do is we need to replace v with p. So to do that, what we can do is we can define a new function using the Legendre transform. Let's call that function as h. So what we do is we have u, which is a function of s and v. So from this u, we want to get rid of v and express in terms of p. So what we'll do is we'll take the product of the slope of u with respect to v, that is the variable that we want to change, times that variable itself. So if you look over here, that is this quantity is minus p. So what we get is this new function h is u plus pv. And we already know that h is called the enthalpy. And we can now see that if we consider a differential change in enthalpy, so dh is equal to du plus pdv plus vdp, but du is equal to tds minus pdv. And we have these terms. And pdv, pdv terms cancel out. And we are left with t ds plus v dp. So clearly h is a function of s and p. So enthalpy is convenient to use when it is easier to control pressure than volume, for example, in the throttling process. And also we have seen that in cases where we have pressure to be constant, then this dp term would go away and then the heat added to the system would be equal to the change in enthalpy that is during the reversible process. Similarly, if now instead of S and V, we want to use the variables V and T, then what we need to do is we want to change the variable from S to T. So what we can do is we start with U, then we subtract the slope that is t times the variable that we want to change that is s. So this function we'll call as capital F and this is called the Helmholtz free energy. And if we consider a differential change in the Helmholtz free energy, we get this and we can substitute this expression for du so we have t ds minus pdv and these terms so tds and tds cancel out so what we get is df is equal to minus pdv minus s dt so clearly the variables now are v and t the Helmholtz free energy F is convenient for problems where temperature and volume can be controlled. Now finally, we have another pair of variables that is pressure and temperature. So now what we can do is, so we know that dH is equal to TDS plus VDP, that is H is a function of S and P. But now we can replace S with T. So we want to do this change of variables. Again, we can apply 
the Legendre transform. So we start with h, we subtract the slope times the variable that we want to change. So we have h minus ts. And this function is called the Gibbs free energy. And we can verify that dg is equal to vdp minus s dt and I leave that as an exercise for you. So the Gibbs free energy is appropriate for problems in which pressure and temperature are convenient independent variables such as in phase transitions and chemical reactions. So whatever we have done till now we can summarize in this figure. So we started with u as a function of s comma v and for u we have du is tds minus pdv then we change the variable that is the independent variable from s to t and to do so we define the Helmholtz free energy that is u minus ts using the Legendre transform so this is what we get and df is minus pdv minus s dt then if we want to change the variable from v to p what we do is we apply the Legendre transform and we write u plus pv and we get enthalpy with independent variables as entropy and pressure and we've seen dh is equal to tds plus vdp. Now if we want to change s to t we get the Gibbs free energy by applying Legendre transform h minus ts. So we can write this where dg is and we could have arrived at the Gibbs free energy also from the Helmholtz free energy. So f is a function of t and v. So we want to change the variable v to p. So what we can do is we can take this Helmholtz free energy f and we want to replace the variable v to its conjugate variable that is p. So we'll subtract the slope. So slope is minus p. So we get plus over here and multiply by the variable that we want to change. So alternatively the Gibbs free energy can also be written as this. So this figure summarizes how to apply a Legendre transform to get these different functions and note that all you need to remember is the method of applying the Legendre transform and this equation which comes from the combination of the first and the second laws. Now it is important to note that when we make this transformation of variables there is no information that is lost when we do this variable transformation. The differential forms of these functions that is this, this, this and this they all express the first and the second law combined for a infinitesimal reversible process. The only difference is the change in the independent variables to a pair that is amenable to the experimental conditions. Now internal energy U enthalpy H, Helmholtz free energy F and the Gibbs free energy G have a character of a potential and hence these functions are called thermodynamic potentials and the reason is why do we call these functions as thermodynamic potentials is so one reason is that just like in uh, mechanics if you have a conservative force field and you take the gradient of potential you get the force in this particular case by taking the derivatives 
of these functions for example over here so if we take the partial derivatives we are getting the other state properties so we, we say that u for example has a character of a potential that means all other state properties can be derived by differentiating these potentials for example let's consider another case of the gibbs free energy because g is a function of p and t we can write dg as so comparing these two sides what we get is v that is volume is defined in terms of the potential g as this and entropy is defined as this therefore all thermodynamic properties can be obtained from the potentials simply by taking a derivative of these potentials note that these thermodynamic potentials u h f and g have a character of potential only when expressed in terms of these corresponding thermodynamic variables for example u is a potential only if taken as a function of s and v and if it is taken as function of s and v then all properties can be obtained by differentiating u as we have seen above however if u is taken to be a function of let's say t and v then other properties cannot be obtained solely by differentiation it would then require integration which will introduce unknown constants of integration therefore u is a thermodynamic potential only if it is characterized by volume and entropy similarly the gibbs free energy is a thermodynamic potential only if we have these independent variables to be t and p now besides these potentials any of these four differential equations can be rearranged to produce other functions for example we can write ds is equal to 1 over t du plus p over t dv then we can take s as a function of u and v but the choice of u f h and g has an advantage that all these functions are energies which unlike entropy are conserved now here we have considered a homogeneous system where we have only the minus pdv work that is a system with only two degrees of freedom one mechanical and one thermal but if we have other variables again we can follow the approach of legendre transform to change the variables and obtain different potentials so we have seen that thermodynamic properties of a pure substance are conveniently represented in terms of differentials of any of the four thermodynamic potentials that is u f h and g in this particular form given over here now these potentials themselves are point functions or properties because we know that u is a property similarly u minus ts is also a property u plus pv is a property and u plus pv minus ts is also a property so this is our g this is f and this is h so u h f and g are properties of point functions therefore their differentials are exact differentials and in general let's say these are exact differentials of the form dz is equal to m dx plus n dy where m is equal to del z by del x while keeping y constant and n is equal to del z by del y while keeping x constant 
Now let's take m and partially differentiate m with respect to y while keeping x constant. So using this relation over here, what we see is this would be equal to del squared z del y del x. Similarly, if we have this relation for n and we take the partial derivative of n with respect to x, then we'll get del squared z over del x del y. Now, because these two second mixed derivatives on the right hand side over here and over here are equal because the order of differentiation does not matter. So, we can write del m by del y while keeping x constant, that is this quantity is equal to this. So this is known as the condition for an exact differential and it applies to all these thermodynamic potentials because all these differentials of these thermodynamic potentials are exact differentials. We can now apply this condition to these exact differentials of various potentials. So if we apply to this, what we get is del t by del v while keeping s constant is equal to minus the derivative of p with respect to s while keeping v constant. Similarly, from this differential of enthalpy, if we apply this condition for an exact differential, we get so the derivative of T with respect to P del T by del P while keeping S fixed is equal to the derivative of V with respect to S. From here we get And lastly, from this equation, again, we can apply this condition for the exact differential. And you can show that this gives us del S by del P at constant T is equal to minus del V by del T at constant P. So all these four relations are called the Maxwell's relations. These relations do not correspond to a particular process but relate the properties of the substance at any equilibrium state. And Maxwell's relations are of tremendous utility because they provide relationships between measurable properties and those properties which either cannot be measured at all or are difficult to measure. In particular, note that pressure, temperature and volume can be measured experimentally whereas there is no way to directly measure entropy in an experiment. However, using these Maxwell's relations, we can determine the change in entropy by measuring the change in pressure, volume and temperature for a system having two degrees of freedom that we have considered over here. For example, if you consider This Maxwell's relation that comes from the exact differential of the Gibbs free energy, we can see that we can relate entropy change with pressure during an isothermal process with the coefficient of thermal expansion which we define as this. So if the system has a positive coefficient of thermal expansion that is while keeping pressure constant if you increase temperature and if the volume of the substance increases then it will have a positive 
coefficient of thermal expansion. So this equation shows that for the substance with positive coefficient of thermal expansion during an isothermal process, if we increase the pressure, then the entropy is going to decrease. So we have gained some additional information by relating this change in entropy with pressure in terms of the coefficient of thermal expansion and such kind of conclusion was not obvious and that's how Maxwell's relations can help us relate different properties, particularly the entropy which we cannot measure directly in an experiment. We can derive many interesting and useful relations between the properties of the substance using the Maxwell's relations. Let us just look at one application and other applications for Maxwell's relations. You can refer to a standard textbook to see various other relations between the properties of the substance using Maxwell's relations. So what we'll show is using the Maxwell's relations is that for an ideal gas, the internal energy is a function of temperature only. That means if the gas obeys this relation PV equals to MRT, then that implies that internal energy is a function of temperature only. Earlier, we had discussed this fact using some empirical evidence, but now we'll show that only from this thermal equation of state, we'll be able to show that U is a function of temperature only with the help of Maxwell's relations. So what we do is, if you carefully look, what we intend to show is that U is a function of temperature only. So what we in fact want to show is that del U by del V at constant T is equal to zero. Because if we start with the assumption that U is a function of T and V, and later on we show that del u by del v at constant t is equal to zero, that would imply that u is a function of temperature only. So for every derivation, we have to start with a differential of a thermodynamic potential. And in this case, we want to look at the internal energy. So we start with this equation du is equal to Tds minus Pdv. Now, we want temperature and volume as the independent variables. So what we consider is U is a function of T and V and S, that is entropy, is also a function of T and V. So what we can do is we can write DU as del U by del T times dt plus this term. Note that we can always choose t and v as the independent variables. The only thing is that if we choose t and v as the independent variables, then u does not behave like a thermodynamic potential. Similarly, we can write the differential of s as this and then we have a minus PDV term. So now what we can do is we can collect the terms of DT and DV and if we do so what we can do is we can bring all the terms of DT to the left hand side. So we'll get DT times this and we have the dv terms on the right hand side that is equal to first this term t del s by del v at constant t then minus p and minus this term minus 
Now, note that T and V, temperature and volume, can be varied independently. So, we must have that both these terms must be zero, that is the terms in the brackets. So, let us consider this term on the right hand side in the brackets. So, we have T del S by del V at constant T must be equal to P plus del U by del V at constant T. Now, note that what we have over here is, all we know is the relation between P, V and T. So, we don't want entropy in our description. So, let's look at a Maxwell's relation where we can replace this derivative of entropy with some other quantities. So, note that here we have V and T. Therefore, we should go back and look at the Maxwell's relations corresponding to the thermodynamic potential that is the Helmholtz free energy because there we have V and T as the independent variable. So if we go back and see this is the Maxwell's relations that we can use. So del S by del V is equal to del P by del T at constant V and we have T and this minus P is equal to del U by del V at constant T. Now we have derived a relation of the partial derivative of U with respect to V at constant T. So now let's evaluate this term using the relation PV equals to MRT. That means P is equal to MRT over V. So del P by del T at constant V is equal to MR over V because V is kept constant. And T times del P by del T at constant V is equal to this. And that is from here is exactly equal to P. So what we have over here is P minus P, that is zero, is equal to del U by del V at constant T. And from this equation, we see that U is a function of P only. So just from this thermal equation of state, we have shown that for an ideal gas that obeys PV equals to MRT, we must have an internal energy that is a function of T only. And to arrive at this, we have used one of the Maxwell's relations. So that's how Maxwell relations are extremely helpful. So before we finish, we'll just state two properties from calculus and uh, we will not go into detail because in a typical undergraduate thermodynamics course, we will not go into much details on these. For any function z, that is function of x, comma y, we can show that we have this relation that is called the reciprocal. rule and there's another relation called the cyclic rule that is this so if u is a function of s and v, you can derive many other relations. So these relations come only from calculus. There is no need for invoking laws of thermodynamics to derive these relations. And from these relations and the Maxwell relations, you can derive many important relations between different properties of the substances. 
And to look at the proof of these relations, you can refer to any standard text in thermodynamics and how you can use these relations along with the Maxwell relations is discussed commonly in every thermodynamic textbook.